Okay, in this video we'll be going over an everyday carry layout. I'll be showing you a design I made for a training partner which is very similar to my own EDC loadout in many, many respects. Now as you most likely have already gathered from my videos, I'm continually attempting to modify gear in some form or fashion. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm always attempting to force my gear to work for me. So the moment I get a piece of gear, I of course try it out for a few days and take continual notes on how it functions in every situation. As I'm going along, I say, okay, I got to change this, I got to get rid of that, and so on. I mention this here because I would highly advise that you likewise develop the same habit as well. I can't stress this enough, folks. Make your gear or tool sets work for you and not you for them. For this design, I began with the Maxpedition Mongo, as you see here. Now, I also like the Maxpedition Fatboy for everyday carry as well, but my team member wanted more overall capabilities with his bag. Also, this individual regularly carries around a small laptop for his civilian job, so we needed something that could accommodate a small notebook computer as well, and the Mongo could accomplish that very nicely. Here's a picture of the Maxpedition Mongo. Now, from this basic design, I envisioned some further modifications and here they are. In this area I wanted to integrate some loops for pens, a flashlight here, and a multi-tool in this area. These were tools or implements that as an urban everyday carry would need to be readily accessible. I would further convert this pocket here into a mini medical pouch and change out this phone holder for a smaller size cell phone pouch which I would purchase separately from Maxpedition. In addition, up under this front flap here I created a horizontal layout for small tools, something my friend could use for both emergency as well as everyday urban needs. Now I drew up this schematic here and my friend and I actually went through a few changes before we finally settled on the layout shown here. Again here's the pens, flashlight, the multi-tool, the everyday medical pouch, the cell phone here, and way underneath this flap the horizontal layout of small tools. And here's the actual bag itself with all the various modifications in place. As you can perhaps guess, yes, this loadout is a bit on the weighty side. However, weight wasn't the primary concern at all here. We wanted maximum capabilities at the ready and at all times. Okay, let's get started. We start with the strap here to which we added a Velcro shoulder strap pad for added comfort. We found this one at REI. Up here on the front top we have an assortment of pens, a Sharpie pen, a yellow highlighter, and a Sharpie combo pen and marker. I specifically had this elastic band sewed at spaced intervals of 3 quarter inches. Also if you're going to make this sort of modification, make sure that you use high quality high tension elastic band. The cheap stuff will stretch out after a while and eventually lose its holding power altogether. Over here we sewed on a night eyes flashlight holster which has internal bands that allow it to stretch to accommodate different size flashlights. I cut out the plastic clip in the back here and then had it sewn horizontally onto the outer flap. Holstered into it we have a Phoenix LD20 which by the way is a flashlight that I would highly recommend. Nut and Fancy does a great review on this item as well and I likewise refer you to his channel for a more in-depth review on this product. On the other side we simply sewed on the Leatherman case vertically in this manner. Again the leather Leatherman Wave is another EDC item that I would also highly recommend along with all their other variations. If we open this front zipper pocket here, we have a wallet and writing pad, all easily accessible yet concealed and protected as well. Up here on this clamshell top pocket, we have some assorted everyday items like a flash drive with important numbers and emergency information. Now we encrypted this flash drive so the individual using it would need to enter the correct password code in order to access the information within. I highly recommend you do the same. Here's some hand sanitizer, got it maintained personal hygiene at all times, an old mp3 player here, and a tactical red filter for the Phoenix LD20 flashlight, along with some gum, assorted cables, a foldable knife, as well as some other small items in this mesh pocket here. Over on the left side we have a 32 ounce Nalgene water bottle, self-explanatory, and on the right side we have a Grimlock D-ring in which to hang keys. Now this D-ring was initially moving around along this web strapping, making it real difficult to snap 
in this carabiner. Inserting these Black Hawk speed clips here not only stabilized the D-ring in place, but gave us the extra ability to add Molly compatible gear if we ever needed to. In this pouch is an everyday medical kit, which is kept here in a waterproof Pelican case. Now my friend wanted this kit to mostly address everyday discomfort ailments, so it's limited by its very definition. In this small red bag we have two spare AA batteries for the Phoenix LD20, some Q-tips and small tie wraps, and some hair bands. And down here we have some solid paws, individually sealed in packets for sore muscles, small gauze, assorted band-aids, Alka-Seltzer tabs, nitrile gloves, emergency toilet paper, secrets for nagging coughs, some melatonin sleep aid for a restful sleep when you're away from home maybe, medical tape, moleskin, some Advil gel caps, and some small burn gel pads. Nothing high speed here, just everyday small time items for addressing simple everyday discomforts, either while at work or while commuting to and from work. Now regarding the phone pouch here, I removed the original 5 inch phone pouch because my friend's cell phone was too small and dropped far into the pouch. I then ordered this Maxpedition 3 and a half inch pouch and had it sewn in place. Since the cover panel on the three and a half inch pouch only comes up to this height, he can more easily grab the top sides of his cell phone for easy and quick retrieval. On the opposite side here we have room for a Molly compatible item and I placed a couple of more Blackhawk speed clips here as well. I also removed the original clip here and placed a D-ring in its place. Now underneath this front flap here is a horizontal layout of some urban style survival implements. We have foldable scissors, some tweezer man tweezers, next a toenail clipper and a 4-in-1 mini screwdriver tool, some WD-40, Burt's Bees medicated lip balm, a couple of mini sharpie markers, a small Bic lighter, a wet fire cube, and a sparky fire starter by Ultimate Survival Technologies. Now keep in mind, the spacing on this elastic band was not haphazard. I actually measured the stretch of each of these items and then spent specified exact measurements for the interval spacings on this elastic band for each item you see here. Again, make your gear work for you. And in this zipper, there's a pair of Wells Lamont gloves. Up here in the main compartment, we have an extra sweater. And in the back, there's a sleeved compartment for other items as well. Up on the top zipper, there's an excellent compartment for concealed carry or for any other defensive weapon that you may need at the ready and easily accessible. I sewed on this handle myself since the Mongo does not come with one. Now, this one modification, the handle, makes all the difference in the world. So if you're only going to make one modification to the Mongo, it should be this one here. I highly recommend it. And finally, the back is well padded and it originally came with a waist strap here. However, my friend had me immediately cut it off since he was never going to use it. Now again, let me make this clear. This is not a typical get it as light as you can EDC loadout. Rather, this bag was designed as a hybrid that combined the attributes of an EDC or everyday carry and what some would call a GBH or a get back home bag. It was also designed to to, if necessary, interchange with various scenarios as well. For everyday urban use, it could be a full capacity attache or computer bag for the job. For extended study or school use, it could be a full capacity computer bag. For ground travel, it could be a full capacity travel bag with all the items to keep you prepared for the unexpected. And finally, for a crisis situation, it could be a medium capacity excursion bag, an MRE, a few 30 round magazines, and an AR and you're ready to venture out in your vehicle on short daily errands to known locations that are relatively secure. If something does happen to come up, you can take care of business accordingly and regroup later at your home base. The Maxpedition Mongo gave us the perfect size to accomplish all of these goals while still remaining relatively light and manageable. Okay, that's it for now. For my upcoming videos, I'll be alternating between various topics, which will include a mix of all of the following the bug out vehicle series, the bug in series, and the methods and strategy series. Until next time, this is Analytical Survival saying, stay safe my brothers and sisters. Okay, in this video we'll be going over an everyday carry out. Ooh, an everyday carry out. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let me start over.